a lot of the secular movements that have come from the 19th century on um, that have they've come to dominate wokeism is the most uh, uh, recent, but even communism seem to be inspired by religion. Uh, they seem to reject religion and yet embrace often its epistemology and its uh, its morality. Uh, truth is re revealed, and and uh, the morality is a morality of altruism. So maybe let's let's go through a few examples and 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 see how that manifests itself. I, I don't know if you want to start with communism or if you're if you're comfortable doing that or we could sure. Um, I was telling you before the show started that you know because I've been doing this research on uh, the religious roots of altruism and doing this talk uh, on Saint Augustine at Ocon, I've been reading a lot of Augustine, and uh, this isn't going to the, the connection to socialism and communism isn't the the point of the talk, but. That gives me a good opportunity to share the following, which I came across while I was reading uh, The City of God, which is this like massive 1400 page tome. Book five, chapter 18 of The City of God. The Christians make a common property of their riches with a far more excellent purpose, namely, so that they may distribute to each according to his need in compliance with what is written in the Acts of the Apostles, with no one calling anything his own and all things being held in common. Um, oh. A doctrine, by the way, that Augustine practiced when he lived a monastic existence and, and, and founded um, the, what amount, ended up being the Augustinian order and wrote the rules for all subsequent monastic orders. I mean, they were the original communists, the, the Christian monastics, and, and Augustine was right there to explain to them why, well, because you should be humble and not be proud, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't claim any of, your, uh, any of your property for yourself, but you should share it in common with others. Uh, and admittedly, uh, in that part of the book, he's, he's described, and, and what he was advocating with regard to monasticism was, was a voluntary uh, arrangement. Uh, but it's not, like, uh, it's not like Augustinian Christianity has any principled basis for uh, making a case for individual freedom. I mean, he advocates slavery uh, yeah. later in the city of God. And you know, he says, you're a slave to God. Part of being humble means recognizing that you are a slave to God. And in fact, politically speaking, uh, you're probably better off being a slave in many cases, because it's better, to, the way he puts it, it's better to be a slave to man than it is to be a slave to sin. Uh, so not much of a case there for, you know, why it should always be a voluntary arrangement. If you know, and he's, he's pro coercion. I mean, he, he, he comes up, he, he gives the justification for kind of campaigns to convert people to Christianity. And why the heretics should be uh, tortured. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, even even relatively, you know, modest heretics, not, not even the one the ones who are disagreeing in big things like he wants to torture the Donatists who have all the exact same dogma. They just don't happen to think that the Catholic Church uh, has uh, preserved its uh, apostolic succession. So they have different uh, communion uh, rituals, torture them. Um, so it's, that's just one example. Uh, and there's, there's many others that you can see throughout history. Um, one that is, uh, if, if people are interested, look up the name uh, Rudolf, uh, sorry, Moses, Moses Hess, who yes. was a, uh, who was raised Jewish in the 19th century and lost his religion and worked to look for an alternative I worked without rest to rediscover my God, whom I had lost. I had to have a God, and I did find him after a long search, after a terrible fight in my own heart. He went on to substitute Christianity's concept of heaven for socialism's concept of heaven on earth. Yep. And Hess is uh, the one who introduced basic socialist ideas to Engels and Marx. And so there is another example you can, you can look to. Um, or just fast forward to, uh, I think, two years ago, uh, Pope Francis writes an encyclical called Fratelli Tutti, which means brothers all, and argues on the basis of some of the same kinds of Augustinian ideas that I just mentioned, along with St. Ambrose, who was 
Augustine's mentor uh, for why if you are holding private property property to yourself, you're in effect stealing it from the poor because it really belongs to the poor. And so therefore, when government uh, uh, redistributes wealth, it's not violating anybody's rights. It's just returning to the poor what was stolen from them in the first place. Because after all, these all these goods were created by God and given to man in common. And it's only the prideful selfishness of men that has separated uh, what God had joined. And so, I mean, there's just no religious basis for uh, anything like private property rights. And I'll go one step further. Um, there's, there's, you sometimes hear people say that, okay, Christianity has all kinds of uh, flaws and irrationalities, but you have to give it credit for at least one thing that it's got this special respect for the individual soul, individual salvation. Ayn Rand herself uh, said this yep. in certain letters that she wrote. This is something I disagree with Ayn Rand about. Like I do not, I mean, I think that might, that's maybe true of the way that many modern Christians have sort of retroactively interpreted their, uh, their religion in light of the enlightenment. But if you go back to someone like Augustine, who's, you know, one of the, the four doctors of the church, the, the, one of the founding fathers of the religion who defined all the core doctrines, I don't see any basis for saying he has any uh, respect for the importance of the individual soul. And you see so much evidence to the contrary. You see, for instance, um, the fact, I mean, his idea of original sin is a form of determinism. And it means you have no free will, but free will is the essential core of individualism. If you can't, if you don't control your life, if you're instead predestined by God for salvation or damnation, there's no uh, individualism there. And it, it's more than that. Like there's this concept he has called uh, that he you've probably many have probably heard of as the body of Christ. It's the idea that the church forms a collective. And in, especially in the afterlife, when we, uh, we are separated from, uh, when we're purified and, and no longer tied to the, uh, the lust of the flesh, we merge into a, into a great collective sacrifice uh, for the sake of God. And I can, I can I'll read passages where he says stuff like this, and it's there's there's no individualism there. It's it's I want to escape from this mortal coil, separate myself from the sufferings of this life, and enter into a kind of nirvana where all is forgotten in the afterlife. There's no individual soul left there. Yeah, and it's it, it it's interesting because there's a little bit of that in kind of Marx's utopia at the end. Um, and there's, and, and it, it does seem like, sadly, um, Augustine, Augustine it, it is making a comeback these days um, uh, among Christians. Well, as long as he was quoted in the Wall Street Journal a month ago by Peggy Noonan about why we shouldn't be prideful and create new technology, and that's why we need to worry about AI. That's right. So it's... And Josh, Josh Hawley is a huge St. Augustine fan. That wouldn't surprise me. He writes a lot. He, he's quite the, he's quite a intellectual, and he writes quite a bit about uh, Augustine. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.